Okay, welcome to episode number 45 of Roll or Die. Today we travel across to New Zealand for our second international guest on the show. I'm very proud to introduce my good friend Paula Takawa. She's a brown belt at, what's the name of your club, Paula? To Manawa Jiu-Jitsu. Thank you. I'm glad that you did that. Um, a very um, experienced international competitor. And um, yeah, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks for having me. This is going to be fun. Awesome. Yeah, I think Anton and I had tried to sort of keep it quite local, especially uh, during the hard lockdown that Melbourne was having. We didn't want to trigger anybody by uh, having any international, especially uh, New Zealand really got out of their pandemic situation quite soon. So yeah, it'd be really interested to hear your thoughts on that and how everything's been over there. Yeah, man, we were quite lucky, but it was inevitable. We're at the bottom of the world, <laughs> surrounded by water. <laughs> Not exactly harsh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it took a bit, borders closed. We went through our lockdown and man, then we opened up and it, we got pretty complacent, um, but yeah. jujitsu. We what, stopped for about four weeks and okay. then we're back into it. Um, right. Yeah. We stopped for I mean, seven months. We stopped for seven months. It was like... Yeah. <laughs> I know. It was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. That was just unreal. Nah, we didn't. <laughs> yeah, that's great. It was lucky that I had Brent, uh, my husband, his black belt, so we got to train at home. So, great. Yeah. So yeah. Do you, is, your, is your husband your coach for them? He is now, yes. Yep, yep. So, yeah. I know. Tell us about this year for you because you've had a, a pretty interesting year apart from um, what's been going on in the world. Tell us about your, your journey this year and um, what's happened. Wouldn't have thought where I was now, which is we've just opened our own gym. We did that in the start of November. Um, basically, when COVID hit and it shut down all our travel because that's what we do. We just travel to do jiu-jitsu and tournaments um, and then that COVID shit hit and we had to stop um, and then we were like well what are we going to do so we thought well let's, let's set up our own business and yeah. yeah do our own gym. So the gym was created because COVID hit and you couldn't travel so you thought okay we'll create our own kind of training environment I guess and um and that's exactly it Anton yeah we, we want to do the jiu-jitsu that we're um that we were learning from overseas and traveling with um the likes of going to meet Kim and mm. and the people through the absolute gym um we did a lot of Thailand camps we we, we traveled a lot yeah and the, the level of jiu-jitsu in the world is incredibly amazing and it evolves all the time. And, yeah. and it's just really good to be able to, we've always looked at jiu-jitsu like a smorgasbord, mm. right? And we'd like to take a bit of everything. Mm, nice. <laughs> Instead of just going to have a la carte. Yeah, and don't fill <laughs> and up on the bread. Just... That's the key. Don't fill up on the bread. <laughs> Exactly. So it's like, well, we want we want it all. We want the entree, the mains, and the desserts. So we yeah. want we want to try everything. And the jujitsu that we choose to do now is a bit like that. That's right. And we're older now, so we've got to look after ourselves. Yeah. yeah. So and tell us about some of your um, your travels that you did. Like you've you've travelled a lot, as you said. I mean, you've done the Thailand camps. You've come over to Australia a lot of times. You've done. You know, we also went to the, well, I came over to New Zealand and did the Letitia and Bia camp. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, and you think you've done quite a number of Australian girls in gear camps, but you've also travelled a lot competitively competing. Uh, yep. Tell us about some of the stuff that you've done. Um, yeah, so we Don't be humble. Like, tell us tell us your, your victories <laughs> yeah. and all of that, go on. Go for it's it. Like it's belly. Exaggerate. Oh my God. Go crazy. Uh, go crazy. So I've competed since White Belt. Believe it or not, Sydney was my first... BJJ tournament that was I met you there Kim at that yes. one yeah years, <laughs> years ago so I was a white belt I had no bloody idea about this jujitsu <laughs> um Brent was the competitor right so I but I turned up there it, this was the it, it was the craziest thing I I'm like yeah I'll do it I go in there and I do this bloody tournament and I'm standing there getting ready to go out on the mats and I realize everyone starts standing and I'm like fuck are they doing? <laughs> so I'm like, Brent, Brent. <laughs> and 
And I call him over and he goes, what? I said, they're standing. And he goes, yeah, that's how you start a comp. And I was like, what the fuck? We start on our knees. (laughs) Just, he said, get your grips and and just go for it. I was like, so that's, I became a guard puller. (laughs) I was like, Jesus Christ. Let me show you, look. Can you see this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> nice. Me too. That's me. Yeah. So I, I pulled guard and then ever since we've, every time he'd go to compete, well, I had to compete too because I'm also part Scottish, so I'm not going to waste my money. <laughs> <laughs> I hate, I hate competing. I didn't like it. Anxiety goes through the roof. I cry. I do everything. Um, but we have been to Barcelona where we did the Europeans. I, I won gold in my weight and silver in the open. That was cool. Um, and we've been to the States a lot, a lot of worlds. That was our yearly travel <laughs> to go to the worlds. And, and I was always on the last day and it sucks, <laughs> especially when you're cutting weight. So I decided last year that was it. I wasn't cutting weight anymore. I'd just stay at the feather weight, just happily go. And then, yeah, COVID hit. Um, but one of my favorite camps would be to Brazil. When yeah. we went and we did a Coyoteja camp um, in Rio. Oh, my God. It was incredibly awesome. And now we are affiliated with Coyoteja. Yeah. Wow. Wow. What, 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 what's the in, in one of those camps? Because I mean, probably not many people have had the experience of being on such a camp. So, talk us through a little bit about what that was like. Like, relive that for us a little bit, please, because I'm excited to hear about it. <laughs> um, I don't know how we do it, but I think it's the Kiwi accent. We just seem to slip on in. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, this camp was. It was on Copacabana Beach where we, it was crazy the way that that Kayo had set up all these security for us. So it was like the whole, we, we trained inside the hotel. Um, when we wanted to go anywhere, you had to be supervised. <laughs> um, they had the, the Volpe, which is their, it's sort of, it's like their military police. And then they had the choke. <laughs> we went to both places. We trained at the Volpe and the and the choke, which was incredibly awesome. We got gassed. We got oh. pepper sprayed. <laughs> you said this was the best camp. I don't know. Your idea of best is amazing. How am I going to do this under under supervision? It's so <laughs> Yeah. Um, we did some crazy things, but oh, we went to the favela. But that again, they had snipers and shit all around. Wow. It was Incredible. it was it was really crazy. I went on the um, caught the train, and it was funny how they made sure that I was always in the middle of the group because in Rio, with blonde hair, you stick out. Kim, you'd be sweet in Rio. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I just got to work on my tan a bit more. <laughs> a little bit, but. The blonde hair was just, I should have been in the south of Brazil. I would have fit in way better. But, yeah, it was It was funny how you had to, you just couldn't travel anywhere with your phone out or anything. Right. So, yeah. Right. Oh. Well, yeah. I'm not booking to do that camp. I'm telling you, you've got worse spell practice for that camp ever. Oh. <laughs> Man, no, you've got to go. If you see one of those, they are awesome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Taking a step back, Paul, you mentioned with your competing, like you get a lot of anxiety, but then it sounds like you managed to overcome it pretty well because you sound like you've done well in your results. So what, how, like what, what have you done? Honestly, Kim, I don't know how. <laughs> I, I fucking freak out a lot. Like I will cry. I lie in bed until the last minute and, and I just don't want to go. <laughs> And Brent's like, come on, it's, it, you've got to go. You've got an hour before you've got to be, you know, you've got to get on the mat. Yeah. Um, up until it's gi check, I'm so nervous. I just I just don't want to be there. And then when gi check starts happening, when the process is happening, when you've got to go through everything, you start to calm down and you, you think, finally, it's here. Yeah. <laughs> just put me on the damn mat. Once yeah. I'm on that mat, Oh man, it feels good because you know, well, the other reason is you know, 
five minutes, it's done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, that, it's, that, it's it's waiting that, around that that anxiety is from the the lead up. So once you're getting closer and you're nearly there, you is I it getting easier? Yeah, you think it's it competed more, or it's still the same? <laughs> no, it's still the same. It doesn't yeah. get easier for me. Brent told me it would. I think he <laughs> lied a lot. <laughs> He, he's the one that pisses me off, right? He'll lie there on, on the side of the comp mat and just wait for his next round. And he looks like bloody Clark King because he wears these big rims glasses, right? Lies there, just fanning it back. And then he sees his name and he takes his glasses off. He goes in, he does his business. <laughs> and then he's off and lies back down. Me, on the other hand, I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ, what, another one? <laughs> <laughs> That's more of a mastered approach. That's how I feel. You know, <laughs> so, I've got to learn to chill out, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's the fear of being hurt because the one time I went as a blue belt in the open at Worlds, I, I think you were there, Kim. Um, I got a big girl, Gabby Garcia. <laughs> was it was, Gabby Garcia? I hope so. No, no, no come on, <laughs> she's like, no, she was, she was a bigger girl, and Brent just said, Get your grips and jump guard. So she jumped guard. <laughs> oh, and he said, I told you to be first. And I'm like, I was getting my grip. <laughs> but needless to say, my hip was fucked. And I was like, Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, I learned to jump guard pretty quick. But mm. that, I was like, nah, I don't like being injured. And that's, I think, mm. the anxiety stems from being afraid of being injured. Yeah. Mm. No, yeah, that's fair enough. But that's that's probably more in the open, but it still transfers for you in your weight division because yeah, yeah. yeah. I just I just don't want to get hurt. I don't mind losing. I just don't want to be hurt. What about injuries though lately? Like at your brown now, is that right? Your brown belt. Mm -hmm. so are you yeah. finding that like for me, I know that my injuries were most extreme at white, then blue less, purple now for me, almost non existent. I don't know whether I'm just not trying hard enough, but I'm not getting injured. <laughs> So are you finding a decline in injuries now? And so that doesn't impact your anxiety? Um, probably, yeah, definitely getting, um, what is it? Uh, my knee is pretty fucked up, my right knee, because that was the one that I injured when I was a blue belt. Okay. Um, and every now and again, it can get a bit tweaked up and you think, ah, oh, crap. Um, but yeah, no, probably not. Oh, I have a shitty shoulder as well that I have to get cortisone put into. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, cool. That's all right. Yeah. That's all good. It's not broken. I haven't had surgeries, so yeah. it's all good. Same thing. And so what other stuff do you do? Like, I um, hope you don't mind me saying, like, we're all masters here. We're all a little bit older. <laughs> Are you doing um, other stuff outside of jiu-jitsu to help you with preventing injuries and things like that? Like Saturday yeah, night bingo, anything like that. <laughs> I was making all the lines of like weight training and Pilates and, and that well, sort of thing. Yeah, 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 I'm a Pilates instructor. So, yeah, yeah I, I, I do Pilates. Um, and that's part of our Tamanawa gym. We have set up all my equipment because I'm based on the equipment Pilates. So we've now got a room that has reformers and trap tables and ladder barrels. And so I do that as well as going to be teaching Mac Pilates and try to find a yoga teacher too, because I like to do yoga. Mm. I, find, I find yoga extremely hard. What, yeah. happened, what inspired you to become a Pilates teacher? Oh, back in 2000, I ruptured a disc in my back mm. and, um, and my rehab was on a Swiss ball. <laughs> okay. That was how the physio gave it to me, he sent me on my way with this Swiss ball and said, you'll be right. Um, and I thought, well, there's got to be more. So I went to what we have warehouse here. I don't know what you've got over there, but we've just a cheap place that you go for DVDs back in the day. And um, there was a Pilates DVD next to it. And I thought, well, what's this? So I took that and um, I thought, man, I think you should learn it from somebody that knows what they're teaching instead of a DVD. So I found uh, my mentor at the time was Jane Gillespie. And yeah, she trained me into Pilates and I took it from the year 2000. Mm. I wonder if Two that's had an impact. Later. I wonder if that's had an impact on your success though, because that obviously creates an even stronger core, a lot of flexibility. Yeah. Like, and a lot of people don't have that in conjunction with their jujitsu. And I think some of the and thank God they don't. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> really, I, I'm I'm not the oh well I mean okay <laughs> excuse you Kim but I'm not the biggest person. <laughs> um, Kim is a little bit shorter, but. <laughs> I'm shorter than everyone. It's no, I'm not a fan of There's no one shorter than me in Australia. In yeah, that's true. Yeah. But, <laughs> but the kids but with, you know, when you, you do in jiu-jitsu, you got to find your thing and, and you find most people are bigger and therefore they've got their, their limitations when it comes to flexibility, but they've got their pressure. But if, you're, if you've got flexibility, usually you can bring a foot over where they wouldn't expect yeah. it. Yeah. Recover the guard. So being a guard player, that's all I need is to be able to get that happening. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. And yeah. tell us about um being coached by your husband or like training with your husband. We've had a, a few uh, couples on. We had Nikki and Anthony Lange on oh, yeah. several months ago, and we've had other people on individually. Lucky live. Also Lucky live. I don't think we talked to them about that though, but yeah. Not so much, yeah. But we've had others. We've had uh Jody and uh Dion separately oh, yeah. today oh, yeah. to think about his training with his wife and yeah so what's your thoughts on that training with your husband um he's he's actually a really good training partner um I don't know if I am for him but I know that he is for me he will allow me to move um but he um if he wanted to step it up <laughs> I would hate it like literally hate it. He would just knee ride me and that would be awful. Mm. So he makes sure that I get to play into the positions. And so he's learned how to invert. He's become really flexible in his own game. Mm. I think by having to try to play without all that pressure. Um, so that's always good. He enjoys the roles now from, from me, which is a lot better than earlier when I just go mm. <laughs> and just, he, he taught me to go backwards to go forwards. Well, talk a bit never... more about that. What does that mean? Oh, man, I used to, you know, how you'd, you'd be working your way because <laughs> the pay dirt is past the hips, right? You, yeah. you just you just need to get past those bloody legs and the hips and yeah. then it's sweet. But it was like I would grab my grip and then I would continue to go forward. But oh. that grip was deaf because he would just annihilate me. But yeah. it was about learning to let go, uh, <laughs> go backwards yeah. and then reset. But I love I it. That's beautiful I coaching. Thank you. I just got that for myself. I'm going to try that out. <laughs> you know, I think that's spot on. I love it. Go backwards, go forwards. Go backwards you just, before you go forwards, you know. <laughs> you have to back out. Yeah. And I just never what wanted about, to. Um, yeah. What about psychologically, like separating your training with your marriage or with your home life and stuff like that? Is that okay or is that a bit difficult? How does that go? Uh, yeah, let's get into the nuts and bolts of this. Great question, Kim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's go here. It's, it's actually a funny thing, this. Um, Brent and I have worked together since 1995. Wow. Oh, wow. So... And I mean, like, we work in the same office. <laughs> we, we worked together. We set up our own company where we've always been together 24-7. So, oh. um, yeah, it was just, it's uh, abnormal, I know, but it's what we do. <laughs> yeah. um, and then I, he did jiu-jitsu for five years before I did. And, and the only reason I got into jiu-jitsu was because I was sick of him saying, let me try this on you. And then he'd complain and say, well, nobody does that because I was too flexible. <laughs> or where's your face? And I'm like, what the fuck is face? <laughs> <laughs> and so that's how I got into jujitsu. I honestly thought I could learn it in six weeks. So was he a blue belt when you started? Sorry, he was a, yeah, he was a blue belt. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and were you always training together before you guys set up your own gym or were you at different gyms or, no. yeah, no, always train together? together. Yep, yep. yep. Um, there was only one gym where we lived, mm -hmm. so um, there wasn't any choice. But that's mm -hmm. why I think it's good that we've bought choice to where we live. Um, okay. Because, it, one, it helps with the other gym to step up their game. Mm. And, and I think competition is healthy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. They storm each other. <laughs> Um, yes. Okay, I got a question around like you had this kind of nomadic lifestyle, and then you you 
opportunistically created a gym out of COVID, which is awesome. Was there a conversation around, will this actually become an anchor for us where we're not going to get to travel as much, you know, where, you know, is, is that a concern for you? No, no. Um, we've always had a philosophy that um, <laughs> there, there's so many amazing people out there that know jujitsu, right? And jujitsu isn't just about getting out there and murdering one another on the mat. It, it, there's more to it. Mm. Um, and once the borders open, we'll bring people in. Mm. And, and they, they, I'd rather learn off people. And so I'm not going to be the main person at my gym. I'm going to have people there that will help run it. But we're looking to do like contracting, you know, people that could come in and spend a year in New Zealand. I mean, it's not a bad place to be. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful. So yeah. We'll You're in Queenstown, yeah, which is yeah. the most picturesque. That's the place where people go with the photos for the <laughs> mountains and things like that. So, yeah. 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 So, it, it's, it's, that's a sale point. Um, but, yeah, it, so, no, we're not going to be stuck at our gym. I, I don't think so. But then I don't think the borders or the – I'm not really wanting to travel, I don't think, until probably 2022. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, it's a little bit Honestly, unstable out there in the rest of the world, isn't it? That's for sure. Like New Zealand yeah. have, have done great to contain it. And for the most part, Australia has, although we're having a few yeah. hiccups along the way here and there. But uh, yeah, I guess it's a little bit risky, isn't it, to make any plans for big international yeah. travel. I don't know about other people. I think it's a bit crazy what's going on in the US where they're still just running comps and, yeah. you know, like, yeah, the World Masters yeah. is on. They wear masks, you know, while they're watching and then they go and compete. Like, I know, I know. it's weird. It's crazy. Yeah. It is crazy. Yeah. yeah. And I, I was just watching a documentary though. that. This is a completely different tangent. Um, but the, I understand that the earthquake situation in, in New Zealand is really full on. Have you... Have you managed to get through unscathed from these earthquakes over the years? Have you, have you like, like, a, a, is your gym earthquake proof? Like, what? Well, yes. <laughs> we just had the seismic works done on our gym this week. So right. That's good. Okay. Um, but yeah, we, we haven't had any earthquakes as such here, touch wood, but we okay. are right on the fault line. Um, yeah. If there was to be the big one here in Queenstown, we'd be completely cut off. Wow. Uh, yeah, it would be pretty freaky, but. And does know, that ever enter um, your mind, like as a place to live, is it like as a as a resident? Yeah, because I I just watching I was watching in seventy four most dangerous places to live in the world, and I was surprised that New Zealand made the list because of its earthquakes. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we yeah. have earthquakes a lot, yeah. but um, I haven't felt one in years. Right. Got it. So it's <laughs> yeah. just daily life. It's not even a concern. It's not there. Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, getting back to the jiu-jitsu, Paula, like, I think I've seen quite a few of your photos on social media with um, your women's classes. So, uh -huh. yeah, obviously, as a higher-ranked female, it, I always tend to ask this of, of the guests that we have on about being a woman in jiu-jitsu and what sort of advice you'd say to someone, especially like a newbie, a, a a white belt that might be listening who and you are a little bit smaller has to weather the storm through those especially those early years uh what what sort of advice would you have for them um honestly it, it's the same advice whether they're small or big um it's just you're going to play defense <laughs> for the first two years of your jiu-jitsu career of that yeah. journey that you're going through mm. yeah. so don't expect too much just make sure you have fun um and stay yeah. safe i, I just yeah. And breathe. Breathing is huge. I really um, would like, I try to get all my ladies to breathe through their nose and laugh a lot. I mean, mm. it's about having fun and playing jujitsu. I, I don't want to just, it's not about winning on the practice mat, you know, that's not where you win. You win on a comp mat. Mm. Yeah. You, you learn to play jujitsu. Um, yeah. And I just let them know that that's where they'll be. In. Yeah. And don't, don't try to look at shit like step one, two, and three. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need that when you're new. You know, you need to understand the bigger picture, not the details. Yeah. 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 So, so we've got our club has a very cool name for our female class, female group called Jits and Kits. 
Do you have I something? Know, I've got one of the patches. Do you? So <laughs> yeah. do you have an equivalent over there? Do you are, you? are you working on a funky, flashy name? Man, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I think Liv took the best name. She did, didn't she? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think Young she must did. have had something to do with that. Do you know Young as well? <laughs> She's very good. Oh, yeah, I know Young. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Youngie. She's been on this yeah, We've podcast. had her on as well. Oh, my God, we've had all funny. these guests. She said yes. her, her opening line was, you've got to go shit to shower. <laughs> yeah, because she was rushing to get to the to the podcast. That's right. And she, you know, when you sit down, when you're on, on a time frame and then you're like, oh, God, now I need a shit. It's always like your body's way of like telling you, yep, that's yeah. it. She's shit down. Yeah. She's trying to bring yeah. that hashtag out. I don't know. I don't That's know it. <laughs> but anyway. Yes. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, you, yeah, you need a catchy name. I'm pretty sure you need a catchy name like this and this. But I don't know you what do. it is. Yeah. But then again, it's only been like, what, a month and a half that you guys have been open or so. So, let's, yeah, easy, <laughs> easy into it. <laughs> yeah. No rush. No Just rush, invite yeah. Young over to come and train with you and it will all happen. I promise you. That's, that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the language. Yeah. That was the first episode we had to put a language warning on with her <laughs> when she was our guest. Yeah. yeah. That's oh, right. yeah, with Young. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. On the lot. <laughs> yeah, there were several of those. Yes, there were. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. What other questions yeah. do we have for Paula, Kim? Ah. Uh, I don't know. So, yeah, we, as you were saying, we're talking about hopefully the borders will open up. And um, are you looking at doing just some maybe travel back just to Australia and do some training over here? Or what do you think? Oh, yeah. Are you going to wait around? That would be nice. I'm yeah. too keen on going in the aeroplanes until they've been in the air a bit longer. Yeah. Because planes shouldn't be on the ground. And work um, out the cobwebs <laughs> on some other people. Some other yeah. <laughs> See how that goes. But we are heading up to, um, on the 1st, we're going up to Whangamataa up here on the North Island. There's a jiu-jitsu camp being held by Rolling Sands. So so that'll be a fun thing to do here in New Zealand. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we, oh, man, I just, I'd love to get back to Thailand. That would be a good yeah. plan. Mm. It would. But, yeah, I don't know how, like I said, how safe that is, yeah. one, to get there. And I'm not sure what their COVID situation is. There's certainly... Yeah. New Zealand is probably the gold standard in uh, internationally in how they've they've dealt with it. But yeah, as you said, on an island surrounded by water, I guess small population, it's easy enough. Yeah. But yeah, might be might be later on. But yeah, it'll be good. I mean, eventually, I'd like to go back to Masters. So how many times have you done World Masters? Three times, four times, three or four. I yeah. don't know. Don't ask me. I'm fifty this year. Come on. <laughs> You are a young 50, i got to say. That's it. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Anton. You're in my favourite book now. Um, actually, <laughs> on that note, actually, on that note, what is the master's population like over there for jiu-jitsu? Is, there, is that a thing? Like, we have this thing called the monthly master's. I just came from it today. But, you know, we just post up a monthly open mat. Every month we go to different gyms. And masters just block in. Like, yeah. like I don't know. It, it doesn't need any promotion. The masters just love getting together and rolling. Is there a master's? community is such a uh, yeah just just on the uptake um i mean we've only had our gym open maybe what is it six weeks or so um we're at 53 members at the moment and honestly most of us are masters right yeah <laughs> um yeah probably master two and above right. um yeah there's not many I mean, we've got a few young people but yeah we're really i don't know maybe we because we're masters ourselves i don't mm. know Mm. But yeah, um, it's good though. I think that we roll. We need to roll more clever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we yeah. Can't and there's an ego. Now. There's a there's a level of ego that's been removed. Like I just remember when I was I was not much younger than now, but I just my attitude towards rolling just seemed so different. You know, right? The master's view of rolling is just is just. So much more, in my view, a discovery of the details of jiu-jitsu and, and its yeah. function and preserving and conserving energy and those sorts of things. Exactly, yeah. 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 I think it's also, for me anyway, what I've come to realise in the last couple of years, it's also about off-the-mat stuff, like how are you sleeping, what are you doing to recover, how are you eating, mm. are you stressed in your life, those uh-huh. type of things have even more of an effect when we're a bit older than if you're in your 20s or even 30s, really. 
because you just your body just doesn't recover as well as it does otherwise so yeah for me it's more about the recovery than the actual training and I'm personally especially after the lockdowns we've had taking a bit less jiu-jitsu into my weeks than I used to so I'm only aiming for like three times a week or whatever trying to make them quality sessions but I think my days of training you know five six days a week I just can't anymore and I don't want to I've yeah. had more meals with my kids in the last eight months than I have in eight years. So yeah, I want to want to enjoy that time with them. And yeah, and that's the other thing too. So you've got four kids, Paula. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you. She's a superwoman, Anton. This woman oh, travels the world. Amazing. Runs a business wait, and uh, has wait, yeah on. does it three all. Three of my three of my kids are adults. Mm. <laughs> that's great. So how often are you training, know. Paula? Sorry. How often are you training in amongst? The- that big life? Um, every day, except for Saturdays and Sundays. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes, um, I know my Thursdays are my busiest. I have I do four sessions on a Thursday. Wow. And, well, because I'm also doing kids. I, mm-hmm. I run the kids' classes as well as women's classes. And, <laughs> and you roll so how does your body hold up after all that like what sort of things are you doing to recover do you have to do a lot of stretching and make sure you get your sleep or how do you um, yeah so um, I take CBD um, mm-hmm. I take a, some of that each night um, I need that um, but we can get that medicinally here that's so interesting you're our first ever guest our first ever CBD guest talk a bit more about that <laughs> Oh, well, that, it was crazy because I, I knew about it. <laughs> it became illegal um, to get it from your doctor on the 1st of April. But because COVID hit, nobody bloody knew about it, but I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was like, let me get some of that now because we used to bring it back from the States with us. Uh-huh. Um, every time we go, we just bring back lots of CBD oil because it's so good. Yeah. Um, you know, you just have a little bit and you're off to sleep and you have the best sleep because usually I'll get maybe four hours sleep and then I'm awake and I'm like, yeah. so I suffer like really bad insomnia. So mm. this just gets me to sleep. Yeah. Um, I feel the recovery is good from it, um, if, especially for inflammation. Um, and yeah, so now we can. I can just. I get it online, um, not through my regular doctor. You had to go through an approved doctor, so it was all via Zoom. <laughs> that was interesting. Yeah. Um, but now, and now that um, I just noticed they they bought in gummies, CBD gummies. So I got some of those as well. Um, they're just. They're, I just think they're really good for us. Uh, well, the oil is really good. It puts me to sleep. And yeah. You yeah. You've never that. taken it, Anton? You've never had no, it? No, I mean, I used to be a big weed smoker. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's a whole well, different Well, this is life. without the um, THC, it though. It doesn't have the THC. Yeah, no, so it doesn't give you the height. That's the point, then. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. No, no. Honestly, it's, it's crazy. You, you know, well, the point is you don't lie there thinking, what's that noise? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm losing it. I'm losing it. Yeah. No, you're right. It's yeah. fetal position. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. it's not legal here, unfortunately. So it is quite expensive. Um, yeah. Edward, you said the first guest, but uh, yeah, your co-host has actually been taking it for oh, a couple really? of years. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Learn something new every day. It's so yeah. expensive though. Like, yeah, it'd be great if Australia could uh, get on the bandwagon oh, as well. No, ours is expensive, but they charge me like $300 for that bloody vial. Yeah, but, um, I, I've got a fellow here that I can get it for a lot cheaper. <laughs> yeah, like a drug deal. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so it's I love it. If you don't get yes. high. Yeah. yeah, it's so good. Yeah. Okay. That's very oh. cool. Um, yeah. All right. Well, look, I, I, I'm, I'm amazed. You are an amazing guest. You're, I so told you. I told you. I bring the good guests oh, on, Anton. That's, really that's it. Yeah. Just, uh, yep. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah I realised. Up after Lockie, <laughs> not an easy follow-up. No, and like when my husband said, "Oh, you know, oh man, Lockie was on before you," I said, "What? Well, he was the bridesmaid, so I'm the bride." <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Yeah, it's a warm-up yeah. 
Yeah. I think we've had five women in the last uh, f- in the last five episodes. We've had four women on, so yeah, yeah. we've uh, we've had quite a few chicks. We had Jess Fraser, the one before Lockie, as well. So oh, yeah, cool. there's some big names, yeah. but no, nah, don't. It, that's what it's about. And as I said, we were talking about you know other people and whatever, but at the very height of the lockdown for us, I think Anton and I were a bit nervous to. Uh, introduce anybody that's like oh yeah we've been rolling for months we're going great and for me personally I couldn't even look at social media like at the height of it because it was almost frustrating to see like oh everyone's just going about their lives just you know going out and about and training and things like that but yeah here we are luckily in Melbourne we we managed to get through it and um yeah we're we're on the tail end we hope but yeah there's still always that you never know. How did you find it going back to the gym after being away for so long? Ah, oh, it was tough for me. I mean, we had, I was trying to do other stuff, you know, I was with my kettlebells, I started running and things like that. Nothing really matches jujitsu, does it? So no. when you've had that long off, it's a bit of a shock to your body. I don't know about you, Anton, but mm. I thought, oh, yeah, I'll be fine. You know, I'll, I'm, I'm fairly fit. But the first week, especially, my body was just in a state of shock. Because it was like, what are you doing to me? Jiu-Jitsu uses every part of your body. And you try and ease into it. But it was just so hard because we had, with our first lockdown, we had like a period of a couple of weeks where they opened up the gym. So there was a little period there, but then closed it almost immediately. So essentially, it was from March until November that we were locked, locked down. And, you know, I've got people at home I would try and do stuff with but it wasn't the same so yeah it was good to get back into the gym and for me actually psychologically was almost as big a thing as physically just that you know that endorphin high that you get after class Mm. that that's been the best thing so yeah that's 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 been great how about you Antoine how did you yeah similar for me like I really wanted to ease back in two classes a week I capped myself but I did five in the first week six classes in the second week I was just so addicted to being back in that gym. Like I was, I felt this, like all the people, so amazing. Yeah, the, the social so side, amazing. yeah. I developed a COVID gut and I could feel that that was starting to <laughs> disappear even from class one. Like everything was just, so yeah, I haven't yeah. looked back to be honest. Like I, I realized when jujitsu is not around, I'm a very unmotivated physically, physical person. Like I'll do lots of things, but nothing like the level that jujitsu calls me into action for like there's something special yeah. about jujitsu that i can't get anywhere else so I'll it's a drug thing. isn't it yeah. it really is it's an addiction like yeah. you you'll you'll drag yourself to class with like yeah. one leg that doesn't work yeah. and you're it's like i've still oh, got three okay. other limbs i'm oh, still good yeah <laughs> i'm still training that's right. That's right. and people that don't train it don't really understand so yeah it's right. uh it's definitely yeah. an addiction yeah. and yeah it's good to be back because we had Paula as well in between the lockdowns and stuff and even during like with the zoom classes that sort of distance training where you couldn't have the contact so it was yeah. very weird you know you yeah. were sort of grappling with a dummy or or doing yeah. it without touching so it was very odd and um yeah. really not what jiu-jitsu is meant to be is yeah. it so, yeah no. it's very good very good to be back yeah, yeah. Quick, quick quick question Paula we are yeah. running out of time I think but um you have four kids how many of those do jiu-jitsu and what was if you know what all right, let's start with the percentage what percentage of your kids do jiu-jitsu um, my, my oldest one, Abby, she did jiu-jitsu for, for, I think, two years before she went on her OE. Um, I made sure she did jiu-jitsu. She doesn't do it anymore. Oh, she dabbles. Um, Sonia, nah, she didn't do it. Arnold has just taken it up. He's my son. He'll be, oh God, I don't know how old he'll be. I don't know, 23, 24. Yeah. <laughs> no, 24. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he's just, he's joined our gym. So he's starting. Late bloomer. He, wow. He needs to lose it. Yeah. yeah, it's all good. Um, and Molly, she does jujitsu. She helps me with the kids' classes. Uh, she's 13. Oh. Yeah, so wow. she'll also um, get to have an after-school job as well by coming mm. down and running reception and things like that. So that's another reason why we opened our club. Mm. It was to make sure that she had something to come into um, for, right. for work experience. Yeah. So for your kids, jiu-jitsu was just something that mum and dad did. It was just know, their yeah. pastime, not something that they – because that's how it is for my kids as well. Like, my yeah. kids don't do it either. So, yeah, whereas well, Anton – 75% of Paula's kids do it, actually. No, they did it. <laughs> <As> a, <yeah. laughs> 
Arnold's just taken it up. Man, we we said to him like four years ago, do jujitsu, do jujitsu, mm. and nah, never did it. <laughs> yeah, same. We That's my story. Along. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Oh, well, thank you so much, Paula, for giving up your time for this. I think, um, yeah, it's been great. As I said, you're our, I suppose, the first real international guest, wouldn't you say? We had the Silver Fox on way back at the start of the year, mm -hmm. um, who was, you know, he's in America. But, yeah, it's been great to have one of our um, Kiwi sisters on. So yeah, thank you so great. much for giving up your time. It wasn't too hard to understand my accent, was not it? At no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. And um, yeah, hopefully we can uh, get a time where, I mean, previously when Anton and I were having just Melbourne people on, we were saying, oh, well, hopefully we'll see you on the mat soon. Hopefully we'll see you in person. But And hopefully it's the same here for us, that we can actually open those borders and get together, whether it's in New Zealand with you or you come over here to us or Heaven forbid, maybe we can actually travel and compete somewhere else, somewhere, mm -hmm. somewhere along yeah, the line. One day. One yeah. day. I'll probably be master six by then, but one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So thank you so much yeah. for giving up your time and good luck with your new gym. I know it must be uh, exciting times over there for you. And um, yeah. yeah, great. Right. No, it's really good to see that, to see that and growing jujitsu in the um, the bottom bottom part of the world, I guess. Queenstown, yeah. it's probably the most southern. Is it one of the most southern cities in the world? Must be. Uh, in Chicago or Bluff. Uh huh. Yeah, that would yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and from, okay. from my heart, Paul, uh, really great to get to know you. I didn't know who you were at all until today. And you're yep. you know, like, to, to think that there's amazing human beings like you walking around on the planet, spreading the <laughs> love of jiu jitsu, that makes me happy. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah, That's good. No, all right. Great. So you'll come to the next Rio camp then. <laughs> yeah, okay. Don't I have one? Is that right? Don't I have one? Okay, yeah. Yeah. I'll be able to come. I should be safe. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys. Oh, hey, all really right. good talking with you guys. We'll hopefully post this up, hopefully tomorrow. We'll see how we go with the, the timeline. So if you could share it, that'd be great. And then, yeah, we can grow our listeners. We're on um, Spotify as well. And where else are we, Anton? Facebook. Everywhere where there's and... podcasts. Everywhere there's yeah. podcasts. All those platforms. So, yeah. Um, yes. I so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've got a big right. listener base and hopefully it can get bigger after this. So thank That's you right. so much for joining us and um, yeah, hopefully see you soon. All right. Peace out. Bye. Bye. Bye.